I were asked to pick three words to sum up lockdown, monopoly would definitely have to be one of them. During the first week, the kids were ferreting around in the box of games that hasn't seen the light of day in years. Out came Monopoly and it hasn't been put back since. We play at least three or four times a week and so far nobody has become tired of it. Robin has won more games than anyone else and in fact we had to finish one of the games we played on Saturday because Robin broke the bank. We'd been playing for a couple of hours and it was down to just me and him in the end. But when Robin had all the money in his hand and I couldn't mortgage anything to pay him off, we had to call it a day. It's been interesting to see the different approach, approaches we take to playing the game. Robin's strategy is to spend as much as he can so he has very little cash. He'll build on his properties whenever he can, even if it means that he's constantly selling and rebuying houses to pay his bills. Graham and I are much more cautious. If we can see we're approaching a dodgy stretch, then we try and make sure that we hold on to enough just in case. And Trin is much too caring really to play the game. If she sees that someone has had to pay out a lot and doesn't have much left, she feels sorry for them. And then she starts giving her money away or not charging people when they land on her properties. Just watching the way we play Monopoly has reminded me that God's economic principles are very different from what is widely accepted in the world today. What works in monopoly is not good for society. And similarly, Trin's compassion and generosity, which is what I want to see as the driving force in society, means that she rarely wins a game of monopoly. Based on the Bible story of the provision of manna in the wilderness for the traveling Israelites, Walter Brueggemann writes that there are three principles in God's economy. The first principle is that consumption is governed by need and not by greed. The Israelites take what they need and no more. There is enough for everyone and we see God's divine socialism at work. The second principle is that gifts are not to be hoarded but to be used for our blessing and the blessing of others. And the third principle is that the worship of God is more important than the gathering of provisions. Every week on the eve of the Sabbath, the Israelites were told to gather enough for two days and that it wouldn't go off this time so that they could take a break from productivity and work and put worship first. I've already said that God's economic principles are not what works in monopoly and I really don't want to continue to live in a world where economic growth is seen as the overriding principle in any kind of national decision making. And I don't want to continue to live in a world where the name of the game is for the rich to become richer, hoarding the bulk of the resources, and never mind anyone else. But as we're thinking about what it means for us to be church in strange circumstances, where we can't rely on our old habits and structures, I'm wondering if there is something we can learn from Robin's winning monopoly strategy in a spiritual sense. I'm thinking about this in particular with regard to Brueggemann's second principle in God's economy, that gifts are not to be hoarded. Imagine all the spiritual resources we have at our disposal. These are things like the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, generosity, self-control, all of these spiritual things have their origin in God wherever we find them. The trouble is that sometimes I think we get used to hoarding them. We like to try to keep them in the church. Perhaps we can share them with the disciples we're in fellowship with on a regular basis or with the people we like. But we can have a tendency to try and hold on to them too tightly. So what if this lockdown is teaching us to lighten our grip and to splash those resources around in a much more carefree way? The fantastic thing about these resources is that when you use them, they never run out. The more love you find in your heart for others, the more love you will have to give. And the same goes for all those other things. It is actually physically impossible to use them up. In fact, they are more likely to disappear because they've withered away through neglect. If you cannot find love for others, if your first response to anyone is negativity and criticism, then love becomes harder to find. The story is that there are two wolves fighting within each one of us. One is anger, violence and hatred, and the other is love and generosity. Which wolf wins depends on which wolf we feed. 
So perhaps we need to splash around the love and joy and generosity with much more recklessness and abandon. Like Robin with his Monopoly money, when we've got even the smallest bit of any of these things, it would be good for us to be quick to give them away and pass them on. And we know we're not going to run out. I know I will never play Monopoly like Robin. The habit of holding on to something just in case I land on someone else's property will be a hard one to break. But I do want to learn more from his Monopoly strategy in the way I live my life. And I want to combine Robin's open-handed approach with Trin's open-hearted compassion and care. I want to be more extravagant in giving of myself to others. I want us, us as churches to be more extravagant too. Generous with the love, joy and kindness we have experienced and have come to recognise as gifts from God so that we can positively shape the communities in which we live. Monopoly is definitely one of my lockdown words. But I'm thankful that togetherness and love are also right up there. And these are the things that I really want to share.